Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of Blazor Train, I'll show you how to use TypeScript in your Blazor applications. TypeScript works wherever JavaScript works, even in a Blazor WebAssembly or Blazor server application. It also works with individual components. You see, TypeScript isn't a replacement for JavaScript. You can't call it directly. It's a transpiler, meaning it creates JavaScript that you can call. You can use classes and types in TypeScript, making it much easier to find some bugs at compile time that you wouldn't find writing JavaScript directly. But Blazor has its own issues with the way it lets you access JavaScript. So today we're going to do TypeScript three ways. Directly from the web root of your Blazor app, scoped to a component within your application, and then scoped inside a component itself, abstracting all the JavaScript away from the component host. And that's all coming up right now, right here on Blazor, 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 Blazor Train. Blazor Train! Okay, so I have a Blazor server project called TypeScript Demo. And I'm going to start by adding a NuGet package. What it does is anytime you add a TypeScript file to your project and you save it or build it, it will transpile that TypeScript into JavaScript. Now here's another very important step. Right click on the project, and select properties, and then look at the TypeScript properties over here. If you don't see TypeScript, then you probably don't have this package installed or you copied and pasted it and didn't save. Anyway, we're going to select this one right here, ECMAScript 2021. Save all. And now I'm going to add to the web root a TypeScript file. And I'll show you the easiest way to do this. Just right click, select add class, or you can press shift alt C and just type the name of it in here, and it's helpers.ts. Then we could just type in whatever TypeScript we want. So this is simple TypeScript. We have a namespace, helpers, a class, logger, a method, public log text as a string, and it just logs to the console, whatever that text is. So this is your variable, and this is your data type. Then we're exporting a function to get an instance of the logger class, get logger. So this is the simplest way to do things, is that you just put your TypeScript in the web root, create a namespace, a class, and export a function to return an instance of that class, and then you can call methods on it. So you can see when I save it that there are more files here under helpers.ts. In fact, there's a helpers.js, the JavaScript that was created by the TypeScript. This is what we're actually going to call. We don't call TypeScript directly. So before we can call into this, we have to tell Blazor that this JavaScript file exists and to load it up. So we're going to go to pages underscore layout CSHTML. And right here, we're going to add a script tag to load it. Notice, not TS, but JS, because that's what we're actually going to call. I think I said that. All right, now let's take over index. So all I've done is I've added a code block, and we're going to override on after render async. So this is going to happen on every render not just the first render, every render. So we're getting a reference to the helpers.logger class by calling JS runtime invoke async of IJS object reference. And we're calling in the namespace that get logger export that returns a reference to the logger class. And then we're invoking the log method using that JavaScript object, that IJS object reference. And we're just passing in the date and time and on after render async called. And then we're going to dispose it because yes, these IJS object references are disposable. 
You don't want to let them stack up. Let's watch it run. All right, now it's going to be logging to the console, so let's press F12. And you can see that it did indeed write to the console on after render async called. And if I go to another page and then back to the home page, you can see it gets called again. But we can do more. Let's do more. I like more. Hey, but before we do more, here's a tip for you. So you're working away and you're trying different things with TypeScript and it's not working and it's crashing because you don't have some syntax right. After you change things, you might want to do one of these. Clean solution. So this technique is good for a general TypeScript class. But what if we want one that's just for a particular component that we have in our app? Now first I'm going to show you TypeScript for a component, outside the component, in the app. And then we'll actually create a new component with TypeScript in the component that the page doesn't even have to call. So what we're going to do is this shared survey prompt component, we're going to add some TypeScript to it. But first, I want to create a code behind file. So we'll get rid of this, and we'll add a code behind. Now, obviously, I need some using statements here, so I might as well make them global. Let's make some global usings. There. Now everybody's happy. Now I'm going to create a TypeScript file called surveyprompt.razor.ts. Now you can see what Visual Studio has done here. It knows that our code behind file is associated with this razor file, so it goes there. And it also knows that the TypeScript file is associated with Survey Prompt. And when I saved it, it created the JavaScript. So here's our class for Survey Prompt. Now there's no namespace, and I'm reusing the name Survey Prompt, and that's totally fine. I've got three methods inside Survey Prompt. And I have a get instance that returns a new survey prompt. So let's add a button to survey prompt right here. And when we click it, it's going to call a method show alert, which we haven't put in there. So let's add a few things to survey prompt razor CS and fill it out. We're injecting JS runtime as an IJS runtime. Now I've got this ijs object reference called javascript and here's where we create it on after render async on the first render so i'm creating a local variable js module that calls invoke async of ijs object reference on the javascript runtime but this time instead of a namespace and a class we use import for the first parameter and the second parameter is the relative path of the javascript file shared survey prompt razor js so that gets loaded into this js module now to get a reference to the class itself on the js module we call invoke async of ijs object reference and pass get instance as the name of the method we want to call that's our exported function right and now javascript we can use to make calls when we want to now notice I am disposing immediately the module. Turns out you can do that, and you need to do that. You can use this IJS object reference, the actual reference, to make calls into the class without this module here. So to be clear, the JS module returns this whole thing, and then on that we call get instance, and it returns an instance of survey prompt. And then on survey prompt, we can make all these calls display alert, display prompt, and log. So now we have this method show alert, which we're calling from here, the button click. On show alert, we're creating a message 
hello from JavaScript at the current time. And then we're calling await JavaScript invoke void async log, because that's the name of the method we're calling, and passing the message. So that'll write to the console log. Then we have another one here where we're returning with invoke async of string the name. So we're calling display prompt, and the prompt will be what is your name? That's going to return name. Then we're calling display alert, hello name. So three calls on the JavaScript object. Now we don't want to dispose of anything here because we want to reuse that JavaScript. But if you noticed, we are implementing iAsync disposable, which means when we go out of scope, if JavaScript object is not null, we'll dispose of it. All right, let's give this a shot. So I'm going to press F12 so that you can see our log still happens. There it is. Now I'm going to show alert, and I get, what is your name? So I'm going to put, wait a minute, what is my name? Oh, I guess it's Carl. I'll put Carl in there. Press OK. And then it says, hello, Carl. Cool. So far, we've created a global TypeScript file in the web root where we've created a namespace and a class and exported a method to return an instance of that class, and we loaded it up. We've also created a scoped JavaScript file by creating a TypeScript file that generates it. And then we've loaded that up by the file name, loaded the module, used the module to get the instance, and on that instance, we made calls in that class. Now, the only thing we haven't done, I think, is create a custom component and then use TypeScript to generate a JavaScript file in that component which we can call from the component and completely abstract away all the TypeScript and JavaScript from the user who's calling that component. Why would you want to do this? Well, maybe there's a great JavaScript library out there and it's built with TypeScript and you want to write a Blazor wrapper for it. This would be how you go about doing it. You can create for a component all the scoped JavaScript by adding that TypeScript file and you can scope the CSS for that TypeScript as well. Let's do it. So to this solution, I'm going to add a new project. It will be a Razor class library. And I'm going to call it Custom Component. Now, I have to give it the same treatment as I did the Blazor app, meaning I have to add the NuGet package. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to go to the properties, TypeScript properties, and change the ECMAScript version to 2021. Now to the web root, I'm going to add custom component.ts. It matters not what you call it, so long as you refer to it by the same name when you load it. So this is different still. It's in the web root, and yet we don't have a namespace. That's fine. I'm keeping the convention of naming the class the same as the Blazor component and having a get instance exported function. And this component only has one method, say hi, passing message as a string, and alerting component one says and message. Now you can see when I saved it, we've already got our JavaScript. Now in the Razor class library template, they've got this example interop cs file. So we're going to use this, but we're going to call it TypeScript interop. Yes, I want to change the class. Now, the name TypeScript interop is kind of a misnomer, because if you remember, we don't call TypeScript directly. But I only want to call it this as to say, this is what we're going to use to interop with the JavaScript from the TypeScript. Okay? But we need to change it up just a little bit. So we're going to use this TypeScript interop class. So I've got a lazy task of IJS object reference module task. And then to create it, 
we're going to call on the runtime, invoke async of IJS object reference. The first parameter is import, and the second one is a relative path to the file name. Now notice we have this right here. That's because we're a Razor class library. So the convention is dot slash underscore content slash whatever your project name is slash whatever your JavaScript file name is, and it has to be in the web root. And then as task is tacked on to the end, because this is going to return a task that we can use to load the instance when we need it. I've created this separate getJS method to do the job of awaiting the value of the module task and then returning the instance from the get instance call. Okay. Now, this is how we call it. Public async value task of string because we're returning a string. Say hi, passing a message. We're getting our JavaScript object by calling await get.js. On that object, we're calling invoke async of string, say hi, passing the message. And then we're disposing the object and returning the result. Now we're disposing this object that we've created right here, but we still have that module task hanging around. And that's why we're implementing IAsync disposable, because when that dispose async happens, we need to check to see if the value is created, get the value, and dispose of it. So this is just based on the example JS interop file they had here in the template just to suit our TypeScript file. So how do we call it? Well, let's go to the markup and change that. So we're obviously going to have a message, a string message property, and a say hi method. So let's add a code behind file and make that happen. So here you can see we're injecting the runtime, the JS runtime. We also have a TypeScript interop object, TS interop. And on after render, we're creating a new TypeScript interop passing JS runtime. We have to do that because JS runtime, remember, isn't operable until this particular lifecycle method. We got to dispose of it. And now say hi is pretty easy. Await TS dot say hi passing message, which is a string. So this is a self-contained component. Not only does it have its own button, but that button calls code into its own JavaScript, which was created by its own TypeScript. So let's change our index page in our demo. But first, before we can do that, we have to add a reference, a project reference from the demo to the component. Now we can instantiate component one. So I've just got a using statement up here. You could obviously put that in underscore imports if you want. And I've just got component one shown right there underneath our survey prompt. So let's give it a shot. All right. So just to make sure everything else still works. Yeah, we've got our log. We can show an alert. There it is. And this is going to say, wahoo. Ready? There it is. Component one says, wahoo. So there you go. That's three ways that you can use TypeScript with Blazor. Now back to you in the studio, Carl. You know, I created this topic because I actually tried to wrap an existing JavaScript library in Blazor components. And I quickly found out that the internets wasn't a lot of help. After a few days of research, I finally came up with the answer. The answer being to avoid JavaScript unless absolutely necessary. Hey, thanks for riding the rails with me today. This is where I jump off. I'll see you next time. Blaze a train.